The last time I went back to the States, I was accosted by my friends teasing me for how European I now dressed after having now moved to Germany. I was wearing brown dress shoes, some green dress pants, a collared shirt, and a camel coat. Nothing that I felt was super European, but compared to my friends, I guess sure, European. But that got us thinking about how our fashion has possibly changed since living in Germany, and if so, what were the influences? What is stereotypical German fashion? Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I'm Aubrey. And I am Donnie. And we are two Americans currently living in Germany and sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. A lot of Americans have a few preconceived notions about German fashion based on a few stereotypes. The first being what was just described, that Germany is in Europe, and in Europe, people dress up every day, are always fashion forward, and always have eclectic taste. The other thing that Americans may think about when it comes to German fashion is what you do see every day in Bavaria, Lederhosen and Dirndls. Just kidding. You do not really see those, except for maybe some Americans wearing those at Oktoberfest in Munich. And the last classic German fashion stereotype, the sock and sandal, specifically Birkenstocks with tall white socks. But what is German fashion really? Are these stereotypes of German fashion true? How does it compare to American fashion? These are all questions we're going to answer and more in our video, German and American fashion, who wore it better? For those that aren't aware, we have been living in Germany for over a year now and we have traveled all over Germany. But we specifically live in Rhineland Falls, a German state in Southwest Germany. Also, we come from a small state in the Southern US called Oklahoma. Therefore, some of what we describe could be somewhat specific to these two regions and some things vary across both of these countries. So definitely leave your experiences in the comments below. We first need to take on this idea of European style and how does Germany fit in with this idea? When an American thinks of European fashion, they think of high fashion and fashion weeks in Paris or Milan. There is an idea that Europeans take more time in the morning to pull themselves together and look elegant everywhere they go. It is sometimes thought of as form over function. They seek to be aesthetically pleasing at the expense of their own comfort through the day. This is compared to the US where often it is fashion to look like you didn't try in the morning. We love comfort over fashion if the two can't be achieved at once and Americans dress fairly casual most places we go. But even though Germany lies right in the heart of Europe, it seems to be an outlier in its home continent when it comes to fashion sense. From our own observations about Germany, German fashion is not that far off from American fashion. This view is supported by an article published in 2019 by Vogue Business that outlines German fashion and the struggle for major high-end brands to get a foothold in Germany that is largely based on three points. Germans like it sporty, practicality is key, and the market is extremely price sensitive. These three points really describe German fashion fairly accurately and explain why you see the clothing that you do. You see a lot of jeans, tennis shoes, t-shirts, and outdoor active attire just like in the US. German is famous for their discount and budget grocery stores like Aldi, Netto, or Penny, and their favorite clothing brands tend to follow the same budget-friendly mindset with fast fashion stores like H&M, C&A, or Primark being the nation's top retailers. In fact, Germany has been H&M's largest and most valuable market for years, and it is only third behind massive countries, China and the US, in number of retail store locations. Now, although the fashion looks fairly similar to everyday wear in the US, there are some big differences we have also noticed. Although both countries tend to wear a lot of t-shirts, the US wears a lot more t-shirts from events they participated in, university t-shirts, or sports team t-shirts. 
Germans wear a lot of graphic tees, more patterned shirts, and if they're wearing a sports team shirt, it will be an actual foosball, soccer jersey most likely. We also don't feel like we see the classic oversized t-shirt and leggings as much that a lot of college girls are famous for wearing in the US. You do see baseball caps being worn in Germany, but again, mostly you won't find event caps, university hats, but rather more branded hats and not nearly to the extent of hats that you see being worn in the US. If someone is wearing a hat backwards in Germany, they are most likely an American tourist. And I'm a girl who likes to wear baseball caps, but I never see other girls wearing baseball caps here. Fanny packs also gained popularity in the US to wear them as intended around the waist, but people have slowly started to wear them across the body. This is something we see a ton in Germany where people wear fashionable fanny packs across their body like a shoulder bag. Honestly, if you're traveling in Europe from the US, we would recommend this to keep your valuables on your front where you can see them. If you are in pickpocket prone areas like Paris and you will look like you're trying to keep up with the latest trends. And last but not least, the men's capri pants. We see German men wearing these capri pants that aren't quite long pants, aren't quite shorts, and a lot of times have a lot of practical cargo pockets. You do not see this in the US because the pants and link tend to be just a cut for women. Now joggers and some more modern trends might be muddying the waters on that a little bit, but these are unique for us to see over here. One of the biggest drivers of German fashion that we can see is the second point from Vogue's article, practicality is key. On a previous video, we commented on the weather and how it was ruining some plans we had made. Our comment section was then flooded with the Germans saying, there is no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes or something to this effect to say you have to choose the practical clothing for the weather. This is a motto we see proudly on display by how Germans dress for the occasion of the day. For example, if they are casually hiking, they will be in their beige shorts, hiking boots, vests, and Nordic hiking poles in hand where Americans might just throw some jeans on and a t-shirt. If they have boots, they'll wear them, but tennis shoes are fine. Going to work out, Germans will sport their Adidas, a German brand by the way, matching shirts and shorts while an American will throw on, again, one of their mini event shirts circa 2005 and some old gym shorts. And we can't fail to mention one of the most important German clothing items, the Alvete Jacke. There are tons of memes saying you know you are German when you own an Alvete Jacke because man can ja nie wissen. An Alvete Jacke is an all weather jacket and Germans always have one on hand in the fall and in the spring because you never know what could happen weather wise. So it's better to be prepared for all circumstances. <laughs> Germany does have multiple very famous huge fashion brands like Hugo Boss, Adidas, Puma, or Ascada, for example. However, Germans don't have a tendency to like to wear flashy brands to show off like in many other countries. The chairman and managing director of Ascada was quoted as saying, our roots are German. However, we are very much a global brand. The majority of our revenues come from outside Germany. An article from businessoffashion.com tries to explain the phenomenon by interviewing some of Germany's top fashion experts that were quoted as saying things like, it is a wealthy country, but quite conservative when it comes to fashion. That might be due to its Prussian work and life ethic and a general hesitation to show off. More subtle and less fashion labels are doing well, but Germans spend their money rather on cars than on couture. And later, there is a prejudice, which is true, that Germans like functional wear. Concerning fashion, Germans don't really spend here as much. In fact, Although Germany has one of the highest GDPs per capita in the world, they spend some of the least on fashion and sometimes significantly less than their closest neighbors with significantly smaller GDPs. Throughout the world and especially Europe, Germany really is not known for their fashion. Well, not their good fashion, but they are definitely known for their fashion faux pas. There, of course, is no fashion faux pas as big as one of Germany's greatest national treasures, the Birkenstock and socks. This is a stereotype of Germany that we can absolutely confirm as a fact in Germany. Heck, if you search on Birkenstock's website in Germany for a set of Birkenstocks, they actually advertise socks 
and sandals together as a comfort set. Also, if you look at list.de's latest quarterly trend report, you will see for women in Germany, the number one search after clothing article was Birkenstocks. And the men's number two most loved clothing article of the quarter was also Birkenstocks. Now we aren't one to judge. In fact, in many parts of the US, the sandal obsession is also very big with Chacos or Tevas being the biggest brands. For years, we have worn our Chacos and one does train transition into the winter nicely with a good old Saco Chaco. Well, that's at least what we like to call it. One of the other fashion clothing choices in Germany that is very interesting for us that you may find mundane if you're a German and also may not really be considered by a lot of people as fashion is the German Blaumann. In Germany, when you see people doing manual labor or hard work, they will often be sporting these vibrant blue overalls or work pants. I have never seen this indigo blue color of workwear, and a lot of our laborers in the same fields in the US will just wear blue jeans, overalls, or coveralls that are dim, khaki, or a dark color. There's something about the color of the clothing people work in here that is so interesting to us because we had never seen this until coming to Europe. We dug a little bit and found the history of the Blaumann is Pretty simple, really. The term Blaumann simply comes from the fact that they are this indigo blue color, Blau, and these overalls were worn by men historically, Mann. The indigo blue dates back to medieval times when blue was easy to produce and was not an expensive dye like gold or red, and therefore was used for work clothes, and it has been tradition ever since. <laughs> Even with all of this talk about German fashion faux pas, how un-European German fashion is based on what Americans perceive, whatever that means to them, there is of course one exception. Berlin. Berlin Fashion Week was founded in July 2007 and has finally started to put Germany on the map for fashion again and spreading a little bit of fashion influence into the rest of the country. But when you go to Berlin any time of the year outside of Berlin Fashion Week, you will still notice a huge difference in fashion there versus the rest of the country. Honestly, the title of an expatica.com article sums it up perfectly for us in a way that we will not need to expand upon for a city where it seems anything goes. Berlin's fashion scene, hip, hot, and hard to describe. And to sum up our experience with fashion in Germany, Lederhosen and Dirndls are a stereotype you will disappointingly not find outside of Oktoberfest and crazy tourists wearing them. Germany is a potentially up and coming fashion icon, but it will take a while to uproot their practical Bauhaus, minimal and comfortable history. This is not at all a knock on German fashion either. This fashion is honestly right up our alley, but if you are looking for a fashion icon in Europe when you travel over here, we would still suggest hopping across the border to France or flying a little farther south to Italy. But if you really want to follow the original German fashion trend, you will just drop your clothes all together and join in with the Fry Kuppa Kultura. We are excited to team up with some companies to bring you sweet deals like $40 off of your first Airbnb or three months free of our favorite VPN service. So be sure to check out the links in the description of this video. And thanks again for watching this video, you guys. We really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And we would love to continue sharing all of our adventures with you all. We will see you in our next video. Tschüss. Lederhosen and Drindles. Oh, you may want to pull up how to pronounce that word too. Drindle? Yeah, because I've heard Dirndl. I've heard Dirndls, Dirndls, Drindles. Dirndl. 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 Dirndls. 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 Lederhosen and Dandles. Dirndl. Dandel. Not to say it like that. Yep. Dandel. 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 Where are these little bitty bugs coming from tonight? Die. Die. Okay. And how do you say it? Is it Escada or Escada? What is that? I don't really know about it. Yeah, yeah. Escada. Escada. No fashion faux pas as a big thing. Why do you know?
crazy face.